In all my paintings, I'm really trying to marry a real emotion, which for me are usually felt very strongly, with an understanding of a gay or queer aesthetics, which is usually ornamental, decorative, and I do think those combine to make a really real and powerful combination. My name is Michael Stamm, and I'm currently in my apartment in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. In one of the paintings, there's a devil with like his anus exposed. He's like pretty abject, and I thought of this devil character as like a pathetic, sort of morbid gay bottom devil. Because as a gay person, I think you really need to reckon, a gay white person, you really need to reckon with how like horrible and evil the specificities of like cis gay white culture has been. So I thought of that character. That devil's kind of like a little bit what I think is inside a lot of us and me. Some of the other paintings, I think the devil is more straightforward in its symbolism as a bad character. In the painting where he's getting stabbed by a sword, it's just sort of supposed to be the death of like a narcissist or toxic personality. I made so super sorry, sir, to address something that happened to me that really is thorn in my side. In uh, high school, I had a history teacher who really aggressively made me apologize to him in the middle of class for like doing what all young gay artists to be uh, did, which was drawing women in dresses. And he pulled me up in front of the class and was like, you must have some real cojones to be doing that during my class. Oh, I don't remember anything other than that. And I remember being so ashamed and I have felt so wronged by that since then. And to me, this painting is supposed to be like going back in time and refusing to apologize or apologizing in like a really effeminate or fruity way. Like it would be a fake apology. It'd be like, so super sorry, sir. You know, that connects to bringing in images of like evil white gays throughout history because I do think I have a pretty ambivalent relationship to the state of power that white gay men have right now. And I think any socially conscious white gay person should be aware of this sort of dual-sidedness of state of oppression and of like an opportunity to oppress. And so there are a lot of like really evil people there like um, Ernst Rome, who is a gay Nazi. And then there are also sort of more comedic gay icons like Mugatu from Zoolander and uh, Perez Hilton. I think there's such a hilarious range of ways that like gayness can become evil you know, some of them are really upsetting and I think need to be dealt with seriously. And some of them I think attest to like how amazing gayness and queerness can be for like incorporating badness in, into the persona in like really hilarious and unique ways. The painting April 14th, uh, 2018 is a really important painting for the show. It combines a lot of discourses, I guess, that I think are really essential to understanding queer slash gay identity in the present. And so I think the two figures in the front are sort of enjoying like post-coital bliss. One of them is reading Leaves of Grass to the Other, which I think is a book that's a generally sort of sanguine, like loving take on uh, sexual beauty. And I think contemporary queer figuration is really interested in the liberation of sexuality and sort of the emancipation in pleasure. That is one important element in the radical potential of queer identity, but I also think, as is evident in the painting, there are a lot of sacrifices that are being made at the same time. This figure, David Buckle, committed suicide in Prospect Park in the date, that's the title of the painting, and he was instrumental in a lot of really important gay LGBTQ civil liberties cases. And he eventually became a environmental activist and self-immolated in Prospect Park to protest the use of fossil fuels. And I also think the poppers are meant to represent pleasure. They're meant to represent indulgence. It's like a fancy accoutrement that I'm actually kind of using to make fun of these figures a little bit. Like they would have an orchid and a bottle of poppers and a fancy book of poetry and a beautiful velvet pillow, but they may not be cognizant of, you know, the sacrifice that this person is making right outside their window. My painting is a wish that they would look out their window every once in a while.